can't go to the cops now. You'll just be arrested, put in a detention center. Call your embassy. You're like, all they can really do is recommend you to leave. You, you, you know, you're alone now. You, you've no real recourse. How did you feel when he told you that he might have to smuggle you out of the country into Cambodia? <laughs> How you doing, folks? Pete here from Tyrish Times. What's the story? How's it going? I've got a big one for you today. It's quite a long one. Uh, you've seen the title, so you know what we're going to be talking about. I'm interviewing a fellow Irishman named Paul Morrissey, who, believe it or not, grew up pretty near me. We know the same people, just by total coincidence. Yeah, so anyway, quick update here about myself. Just started a new job. That's why I haven't uploaded in over a week. Going through a crazy learning curve. All very exciting stuff, so I've been busy. I'm still filming content. I have some interesting interviews coming up, actually. Uh, yeah, so stick, stay tuned here on Tyrus Times. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We're just, we're just busy. But anyway, Paul has been banned from Thailand. He's going to get into that story, and uh, you decide, right? There's, it's a long story, so if you make the full commitment, you're, you're going to get into... Um, well, you're going to hear Paul's side of the story, right? And... Uh, Leave a comment and let me know what you think, because I'm very interested to hear what you think about it, right? So without further ado, let's get into it. Do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe and leave a comment, because it just does help me out here, this little t channel, Tyrish Times. Cheers. All right, Paul, thanks very much for doing this today. We've got a really, uh, I suppose, a juicy story, right? When I heard this, I was like, right, I need to talk to you about this, right? Um, okay, so basically, you've overstayed your visa by 628 days. You're now banned from Thailand for three years, right? And so what we're going to do is now is I'm going to let you get into it. You're going to tell the whole story. I'm going to sit and listen to you and mm. then ask some questions then after it, right? So okay. Take it, take it away. Just take it away. All right. Just one thing. Just what do you think about my lawyer's present? Just... That's my constitutional <laughs> right, Pete. All right, there might be a few things we might have to go off the record. Is there a Colombian lawyer behind you? Is there? He's right there. Yeah, was, <laughs> I had to, mate, I'm not getting lest I be litigated and get extra. <laughs> this is just just crossing my teeth. Don't worry, he might intervene once or twice in the in the chat, but it's not going to be a big thing. We might confer over some of He the... might tell you no comment, really. Yeah, just but just let me. Is that? <laughs> Yeah, we can go. With, okay, we're, we can go with this. this All right. Okay. All right. Um. So. Yeah. All right. Let's start with. So this is a story all about how I got banned from, from Thailand. You got the reference? Yeah, I did. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Um, yeah. So all right. Where to start? I suppose. All right. Let's go back. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. That's another, I'm all about the memes right now. Do you know that? I love that one where like someone's been like knocked out or something and their face planted on the ground and then it goes, Zzz, that's me. And it's like, do you not know that one? Um, I, I vaguely remember that one. You're making me work here for this interview, Paul. You're, 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 you're skipping around. Come on, let's, let, there's the juicy one here. We look, we were all waiting for it. People are watching this now. They're like, come on, Paul, let's go. All right. So I'll introduce, so like, I suppose a bit of context. In, by 2020, when I came back out to Thailand, all I'd ever done in Thailand was tourist visas. All right. Two months plus one, two months and do your extension at the office. And beyond that, go to Lao. I went to Vientiane maybe 12 times. I don't know, between 10 and 12 times. I also did. Cambodia. I have a story about Cambodia. Actually, I could, I should tell as well. It's actually, the storytelling is going to be a big part of the channel now. Um, I did Vietnam, and you'd come, you'd never let go of your passport for, for more than a day. You'd go to that embassy, you'd pay like eighteen hundred baht, and then you get a new two monther, come back in over land by bus, usually from Lao, and then you you continue that, and you got the full year out of that, and then you go back for a visit to Ireland and recommence, and so like. Although that there was a bit of preca precariousness about that, I always kind of envied people on the education and non-O's that they didn't have to leave the country like that. However, 
you get a bit of crack. I, lo- I kind of like the Lao adventures. You, you meet people and it's a bit of a break from Thailand. But yeah, the education ones did appeal to me. But when I came back in 2020, February 2020, um, I came back with the two-monther. So just as I got back to Thailand, I moved down to Pattaya, 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 Pattaya. And I was like, I'm going to give it a good crack down here. Um, got an apartment set up and all that. Cracked away working online. And um, about two weeks in, coronavirus, COVID hits, and the world goes mad. And all these rumors start floating about, like, what are people going to do about their visas now? Are you uh, going to still be able to do the tourist visa? If borders close, what are they going to do? But thankfully, as amid all these rumors were flying around, I'd say around, like, let's go to, like, late March, early April, the Thai immigration announced for all tourist visas, it would be free and open for, uh, for the time being until further announcements. So everyone was like buzzing about that because there were all these rumors people were going to have to leave, that the immigration officers will no longer be able to hold them. or uh, The immigration officers would not have the, the man and woman power to facilitate people for the next period. Do you remember, were you hearing these things in Bangkok or? Um, no, see, I was always on uh, the non-immigrant B visa, so I never had to worry about that. But I remember it was a, a strange time for people when COVID was first starting and they didn't know what was going on with their visa status. So mm. I, to- I totally get that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I actually have a video where, and that was like a really relief. I was like, yes, the tourist visa is all good. You can you can stay. And then fast forward about, about a month. I'm going to be a little bit, I have a really good memory, but. Like, we won't argue over months and dates here and there. I'll get the most important dates. Yeah, in. yeah. But if we go to, like, I want to say we get to May 2020 now, about three months into COVID, and now they're uh, now they're opening the extensions again. You can pay your 1800 for your tourist extension. But this is where John, we're calling him John, my landlord, intervenes, right? And, like comes to me really earnestly and is like, Paul, they're going to stop this tourist visa. And if your country, if your country's open to allow you back, you're going to have to leave. And that I, he was not the only person that said that to me. Other people were saying this now as well, that um, the tourist COVID extension would not go on forever and ever. Long behold, it did. It just went on and on. And that's all I ever wanted to do. I just want a peaceful life with this stuff. I don't want... Like, I didn't need to go on to this non-O or education unless it was absolutely necessary. I was grand. Do- I know how to do, <laughs> go to an office, stand there for a couple of hours. I know how to do it. I've been doing it for years. Um, but I was strongly recommended by John, who was my landlord and who I always trusted. He always, like, part of his culture. I won't even say his country because, like, I don't, don't have any negative connotations about him. But they're all about sharing food. He always shared food with me and everything. And... It's like, of course I trust him. What is he to gain from any from doing getting me caught up in anything? So I agree to the non-O visa. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll trust you on that. And I actually paid like 30,000 baht for six months. All right. It was so that takes us June, July, August 2020. At that point, you have to I only ever had my passport for a month at this time. Because then in August, you have, I had to give it again. Okay, John says, we have to give it and get an extra stamp to, to get the next three months. That takes us September. So he delivered then. He actually got you the visa then. He did, yeah. I can, put, I can bring up my passport. They, that was all completely done. I paid a pretty penny for it. like, um, But I had the money and I'm like, I was in a good setup over there. I was like, peace of mind. I like the idea of getting onto a non-O. But then what happens with a non-O is you can't go. <laughs> I'll try to explain this as we go on that. It gets you into a bind then. Not that I even know, or it's all so vague. They never give you clear answers or anything. It's all this uh, cloak and daggers, like in mystery. But um, yeah, in it runs to December. All right. Like, so yeah, it was six months, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. It got me to December. 
20. I, actually, around the time I came to Bangkok, I just can remember that very well, was when he came to me again. We'd always be in contact. He'd always be around the building. He teaches English in schools over there. And um, yeah, we'd always be in contact. And he was like, all right, I'll need it again from you now. And we're going to get you, because it's going to run out soon, and we're going to get you the next, a new one again. Actually, no, yeah, this time we're going to make it a full year visa, all right? So I'm like, grand, let's do the full year. And he always said, this is the great thing about this, you never have to do anything. You'll never even have to go to the office. I'm cool to go to the office and show my face, do whatever most people do. But he was like, look, Will, Will I'll take care of this for you. And he did, himself and um, his female friend, let's call her Hallie. They actually did go to the office and spend hours there for me doing the, that update, that additional update in the September. So we get to, yeah, we're into 2021 now, all right? January 2021. And I've now given my passport away and I never get it back again until I leave. Is it 17, 18 months later in September 2022, all right? Because uh, from this point on now, so I pay in installments. We come to a decision by February that I'm going to pay 50,000 baht in 10K installments. And I paid that into his bank account in Cassie Corn ATM banks, 10K every two weeks. We got, that took me to, it was like, you have a deadline. And they were really pressing on the deadline as well. Like, they want it now, they want it now. And I was like, oh, understandable. I'm paying it installments. But, you know, keep that same energy when we're going to get me the passport now. Like, it was so urgent. Like, it felt like unbelievably pressing and urgent. Which is understandable. In some ways. Um but everything all seemed so stressful. I was like, all right, all right, I'm going, I'll go. And I, I went to the ATM, put 10,000 baht cash in five times, kept receipts for that, paid 50,000 baht to John's bank account. With John getting that cash now, John pays this visa, visa agent that for my new year, no, no, visa transaction. Put bacon in, get bacon out. Like, that's how it should work. So we get to May 2022, let's call it 2021. Um, 15, let's call it halfway through May. And I'm like, all right, I've paid all the money and I've got confirmation that I got it all in on time and we're going to get a year now, which would be May 2021 all the way to May 2022 of a no-no. And from this point now starts like, it just, you get about, you got about feeling about it. I, I didn't say anything probably for about two, three weeks. Um, we get to like June there and I'm like, I'd message him every now and then. All right, John, any update? You know? Yeah, it's coming. It'll be coming soon. And then like, I didn't specify on the, on the video, like there would always be a date. They would spin a wheel and he, I don't know if he would, sometimes he would invent a date to, to placate me or sometimes I would tell him a date. It, it could be like, you're going to get it on July 19, or you're going to get it on. And we'd, we'd wait and wait. And I'd, we'd be coming to the day, bef the week before. And I'm like, all right, I'll drop a message. Surely a few days before I'm getting this beautiful, beautiful maroon Irish passport back, there's going to be a little bit of an email or something. <laughs> you know, like I'm so clear on my communication. I'm like, look, I'll go to the office. Where are they? Tell me. I'll, I'll get some clear information from them. He would never tell me who they are. I'll get another um, deadline of uh, September 4, October 25. It's going to come that day. And in this meantime, oh, there's been a COVID outbreak in their office. Okay. Understand. Like, understand. It's just tell me what, as long as I'll get it, if I have to wait the whole year to get it, give me a piece of paper or something. And I'm good. Like, I, I didn't need to travel much. It, I went to Chiang Mai about twice in this time and I, I took the train and buses, which took the trains, yeah, um, which was inconvenient to say the least. I wanted to fly. I couldn't fly because no passport. Um, so we get to December 
2021 now and like i see him in the office i see him in the in the lobby one day i'm like john that day he'd been promising me something there were always these promises and he just looks at me and goes i go no no way no no it's december now all right <laughs> we're like six seven months on that i had paid it all and i still hadn't got it and so you know what he actually does now he actually went to that office so the, the story now is Okay, and just bear with me, like, I'm not making anything up. It's just, it's all sort of like ancient history to me now, and none of it even makes, I don't no, know. No, 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 carry on. How much is true and how much is not true, but the story now became, they're out of that quota, they're, they're fulfilled their quota of non-O's. I'm like, but you, you, you told me to go and pay it, and now you're moving the goalposts, but okay. I'm ready to adapt to things. Let's go back onto a tourist visa. Let's just go to the office and get retrospective. Oh no, you can't do that either now. What? So now I'm overstay and illegal. And like, but the way I always thought was like, why would anyone like me do this? Like, you know, why would I not just go and do the tourist updates for the, so I always thought I'll never be in trouble over this, you know, or get any ban or anything because like, I've clearly been, an honest John over it and done what's asked of me. Why would I want any complications when I clearly can do the regular way? But so he's like, look, they can't do it now. So he actually goes to their office. They, that office is located right next to uh, Pantip. Is it Pantip? No, Cook, Pantip is Bangkok. Tukkom, Tukkom in near Soibokal in Patea, right? John goes down there. And like, you video call me with the lady. And she's like, yes, I'm sorry. We can't do it. So sorry. I'm like, okay. Because what his plan is now, the reason he's going to get it back. And he has another guy to do it, right? This is December, 2021. So uh, he actually sat in that office for a couple of hours in his own free time. He works a lot teaching English. Comes back to our place in uh, John Tien. I didn't touch the passport, but he showed me in an envelope with all the cash back. All right. And I know that's what, what it was. He's like, I have a guy now who promises a month in a month, which would take January 22. He's going to correct the overstay of it, which is all mad to me like that, that I'm overstay by this. I, you know, I hate that word. Like I'm, I like, I prefer to just say like my visa's expired. The word overstay when you just hear type, Oh, you always say you always say, but anyway, just a word that kind of rankles with me. Um, but I'm like, all right, you've got me into this. <laughs> Just get me to, can you get me out of this mess? If you say, uh, now what, what do you do? Like now you're up shit creek without a paddle. You can't go to the cops now. You'll just be arrested, put in a detention center. Call your embassy. You're, like all they can really do is recommend you to leave. You, you, you've no, you're alone now. You, you've no real recourse to correct this. You have to, you're in it now and like, I had to keep the faith with John here and think surely he can get us out of this now. It all becomes a very like kind of like a like a dramatic mission from a movie. When I don't everyone else I knew, I'd be down the sauna bars, like just chilling. Everyone's like, oh yeah, just been down the immigration, mate. Just just got me. And I was like getting really pissed off. That. I was like, I just want to do that. I just want to get my passport back. Like I always did. And I start I started to I started to feel really like. No, it, it never kept me awake at night or anything, but like everything was going so well for me with friends, with life, with everything out there. And so that would be like, this, like, why is this hanging over me? So, the, so Paul, this is December, right? 2021, but you left in September 2022. So what was the story then, right? Did you stay on overstay or tell us that part of the story? Yeah, yeah. So now it goes to a second office, January 2022. All right. And now this office is going to do it in a month, correct it all and get us, get me the year visa. But it's massively seven, six, seven months overstay now. Um, and then proceeds another series of delays and this and that and the other. You said it was a month. Yeah. And then he always had an excuse, John. He always had an excuse like, Oh no, I, I did say one to two months. It's like, yeah, but don't say the earlier date. Just say the latest if it's always going to be the latest. Don't be getting my hopes up. You know, it would always be pushed and pushed and kicked the can down the road. And all the while, I'm look, I'm like, 
what are you even talking about? We're in this, I'm just going to take this out, um, charging the speaker. We're in this period where like, do you remember how much of a ghost town it was at times? You can, can you imagine how realistically easy it was to do this? Like, it was just sitting in a drawer. This second guy, it just sat in a drawer for the whole time, I believe. We get to March, April 2022 now. We're getting to a year of it being overstayed. And now I'm starting to hear stories that it's going to have to go out to C Cambodia, get an exit stamp now. And there's all this stuff that's going to have to be done with it. Okay, so if it has to be sent to Cambodia, do that then. Get the exit stamp on it. I, I started to feel real dumb. Like, do, am I really dumb? Like, I don't understand any of this stuff you're talking about. I never heard such complications. Just, I paid it. Can we not just get it, you know? Um, and it was just always these stories. So, like, I'm like, send me a picture of it in, in Cambodia. Send me, send us a picture of the passport in an envelope of the guy. Just send me a guy with the guy holding the passport. Never anything was given to me. Um, I'm starting to speak with Spanish, English. Nunca, put never at the start of the sentence. Um, so, so then how did you get the passport back? Like, tell us that process. Right, we get to May 2022, June 2022, and it's still, we're, let me just keep track. We're still hearing that it's going to Cambodia and it's going to come back from Cambodia then. Um, I mean, I could bring up screenshots of, um, of some of this stuff. No, 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 we believe you. No, just yeah. keep, you just keep um, going. And... Yeah, actually, I'll bring it. I'll come in with an anecdote here of uh, an interesting. Did you hear the part about the Indian guy on my video? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I have questions about that coming up for you. Yeah. Well, uh, this happens around around then about May, late May, June twenty. So just to, to just to explain to the viewers who don't know what happened, tell us what happened on Walking Street. Then you're on overstay. You knew you're on overstay. You're walking down Walking Street. What happens? Yeah, it happens at this timeline, right? So I think it's uh, it's relevant to bring it in now. So uh, yeah, we've been down shooting some random stuff with this this uh, charlatan Indian bloke who uh, claimed he was gonna get Bollywood productions going and stuff. I said, come on, if if you've got a half decent camera, we can go down for a couple of hours. Nothing to lose, really. Um, I didn't really enjoy his presence or his his uh, style or anything, and so I was like, even. When we were doing that shooting on the on Walking Street, I was like, "Yeah, fuck this for Game of Soldier. I won't be doing this again." Because it doesn't seem like he really knows what he's up to. But as we left Walking Street, um, it's a rainy day. We're just walking, uh, walking down. And a motorbike, a little scooter pulls up really quickly out of nowhere, and um, just two guys on the bike with badges, immigration badges, plain clothes. Um, immigration police just rock up straight up to him and go passport all right and i'm with him and they can easily ask for it right here and i'm i'm an i'm an illegal alien at this point um so i just stood there and watched for a second and the two guys are standing around him and they asked him to pull out his passport and he didn't have it on him so he, he starts trying to bring up stuff from his phone and i just he got he actually said to me fair play to me he goes paul you go and I just waited for a minute and I was like, I looked at the cops. I didn't want to show like that I'm running away or anything. So I waited and I was like, I'll stay. I wanted to show him a little bit of loyalty as well, even though I didn't know the guy. It seemed like a bit unfair what was happening to him. You don't know what to expect or what, what the truth was, why they were searching him. Uh, it turns out I'll explain why they were searching him. Um, then a second time when he said it to me, he's like, Paul, you should go. And I, I said to the guys, the immigration police, I was like, do you need to speak to me? He said, no, no, you go. <laughs> they didn't ask me anything. And so I just went on my way. And when I got back to the place, I went straight on. I was like, John, you're going to have to give me something. Give me a piece of paper, a receipt that I can carry around for this unbelievable shambles you've got me into. I could be arrested. I could, be put, I could have been put in a detention center right there. Um, and he's like, what are you talking about? What, what do you mean? I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> standard practice you pay for something get a receipt and like you leave me this vulnerable um that guy actually did get deported back to india he was overstayed and the reason he was searched it was a random search because uh a high proportion of indians do get into that situation and the, the thai immigration are aware of that 
So that's why they were searching him, and they got they got the guy they were looking. They got so this guy, you asked him for some sort of paperwork just to prove that he had your passport or whatever, and he didn't give you anything. So then, what what you do then? He did give me uh, the first. I could I could pull this up as well if I really went back. I'm sure I have a screenshot. A promissory they call it a promissory note. It was just written off Microsoft Word from that first office in like the October November, and it's like I promise to give Paul Morrissey his visa by December 4 of the 2021. That was the only thing I ever got. It was like, oh, a promissory note. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> like, and of course, it didn't come true. Um, but this second office, I, I feel like the first office were, were really trying to do it for me. And maybe they did, maybe there was a quota. That maybe, maybe that's true. I don't, you, you, you're, struck, you're stuck between being naive or cynical. I don't want to be going around, all these guys are scammers. I'd never been. And I don't see why they would scam for a couple bat, like in, in plain sight. When you see the person on video, they're, they're running a risk there. You know, like to be, you start questioning all the stuff of like, what well, are they able to just scam like this and get away with it? Are they paying people off to, I don't know. When did you get your passport back then? Okay, so that incident with the Indian guy was around uh, June, 2022. And now at this point, I'm like, it's just a big energy building up in me that like, I've got to get out of here anyway. Um, but this is kind of like accumulated my energy to leave here. Um, I'm, re- I'm pretty happy and content in many ways, but South America's, ca- America's calling me, Ireland's calling me to see my parents, my family, and just my independence back. I, was, I started to just feel really weird about this, that I was like, just not allowed to, I was starting to feel a bit trapped, you know? So I, this is where, let's go to July, 2022. Now it's like we're at the final stage, the final boss. Um, because now he starts to say like, right, you could be, you, you might, we might have to sneak you out into Cambodia. We'll have to sneak you out of the country or the, the guys that he's still in contact with the guys at our building, they can get you an immigration officer. They can pay an immigration officer to accompany you to the airport, make sure you get out safely. That was another option. I called the embassy at this point. I'm like, and they they were like, look, Paul, you need to just get that passport back. There's no way this can be corrected. That was all a big lie. That second office told you a really nice Irish man um, in Bangkok told me that. And he, he couldn't believe what I was telling him. And he's like, how did you let this? I was like, I, I believe me, I've been trying and trying and trying and I've been, everything's been put against me. To, I couldn't get it back. I've demanded it back. And he's like, look, you just need to leave because we don't want you getting arrested. We don't want you going to a detention center. It could be up for up to three weeks with limited food and all this. So then I just, I said to John, I was like, look, let's just get it, pull it back. You might be wondering, why didn't you pull it back all this time? Because there'd always been dates. There'd always been reasons to believe this can be achieved. And there was no... We're, you're in it now. You're in a bad situation now. It's not any worse by a couple of weeks later. You might as well see it out a bit more and see. But no, we, we, yeah. You might say, oh, that was too late. But it just something, July is like, no, just just get it back. Just get, I don't care if it's undone now. There was one more option. I've paid them 150,000 baht and it'll be done now. So like, it's essentially talking about a bribe or... 150 grand and you get your overstay <laughs> deleted. Yes, yeah, supposedly, but you weren't taking that chance. Supposedly, but that didn't seem trustworthy. Like that seems complete that's horseshit. That the thing we paid for now that you promised, oh now we can't do it. Like you said you could do it. It just sat in a drawer. It just sat in a drawer from January to August. Um so I say to John, just, just pull it back. Just get it off them. I just want it back now. And amazingly, we do get it back. He just, all he has to do is ask for it back. And the guy gave him it back. <laughs> gave him it back. And then I meet uh, John at swimming pool. He comes to me and he's like, here's your passport. I open it. I was like, oh yeah. And, uh, and the money. <laughs> You're not going to give me something to start off with, of this back. And he's like, oh, I'm so broke. I, can't, I was like, what, is he going to give you that money back? And um, 
He's like, I'm waiting for it. He says he's going to give it back. He says, I actually messaged John this morning. We're still on terms, like, oh, because he gave me all the money back. Last I heard from him, he still hasn't got it back. So he probably will never. But I was waiting to see. Hopefully he, can, he has, or he's done something. I don't see why he's letting this. And he gave you the 50, the 50K back, and then you left Thailand then. Tell us that, what, going out, going out through the airport. About a week later, um, I didn't think he would. I kind of was like, he's not going to give you this back. Um, because what I've no leg to stand on, I can't like threaten him with the police or anything. Because I'm, you know, people just say he got out the police for me. <laughs> you know, you just feel like you can't do anything. But he did, yeah. His uh, his friend, we took, came to our building one night. I, I didn't expect it at all. They took out twenty five and twenty five, hands me fifty thousand back cash outside of Seven Eleven, jumped in. I was like, all right, it's all it's all been resolved now. My passport just sat in a couple of drawers for a year someone's been scammed fortunately for me it wasn't actually and ultimately i didn't pay any price over it john did i feel really bad for him i booked a flight bangkok to dublin september 11 and uh yeah amazingly all you're ever gonna get is a twenty thousand baht. that's one of the most amazing things of this is for all the stories of thai immigration being like you know a system that tries to exploit money from people and they could go to town on that. You just paid a 20,000 baht fine. And, and what did you just get a stamp in your passport saying you're banned or what? Like, what tell us that going out through immigration in Bangkok airport? We get to the airports, and uh, yeah, it's unbelievably undramatic. I just, uh, from okay, from your check in, they say nothing. You know, I was wondering, will they say something? <laughs> there was a bit of moments where, like, checking in the bags and it's just, I heard them talking about something. I was like, oh, shit. Like, if they're already talking about this, I thought something might be happening. But I think that was just a situation of, can we make sure he gets his bags all the way to his final destination? Which I couldn't. That was what it was, yeah. I had to recheck in in Copenhagen, which was a sket. To be honest, <laughs> that's but that's neither here nor there. So like I flew Bangkok to Copenhagen and I had to like get my bag and check my bag in again. Pretty annoying. Um yeah. So check in there. Fine. Just get you get your boarding pass. There's no issue. You're flying out with so here's uh, let me put context onto that. Like the rule is once you as an alien, an, an illegal alien are flying out and you're not caught in this situation, then just, you're fine. It's it, what they call, what's the wording they have on the poster at the airport? Um, That's because so you handed yourself in, right? So yeah, hand like, yourself in, exactly. Yeah, the, exactly. The, the ban was less because you handed yourself in. If they got you on the street, yeah. you'd got a lot, you've been a ban for a lot longer. So did you get a stamp in your passport saying you're banned yeah. or what, what's in your passport? Yeah, yeah, it's written in Thai. So you go through the security check, nothing there. They're not looking at it. And it turns out it's all way less dramatic. Like they don't, they see it all the time and it's just an arbitrary rule that they follow. So the final part when you're going through immigration now for your picture, right? It's kind of like where, all right, this is where it happens now. And so... Uh, the lady take my picture, just handed my passport over to the, the overstay desk. And she's like, you just go over there now? And I was like, I went over, all right, ready to get my medicine here. And um, it was just a sweet little toy lady just says, oh, uh, you have an overstay. You're going to be banned. And there was no, like, anger over it or nothing like that. She just said, she just got me to sign a few pages. I have the receipt here. I have the... The proof of it and here's the writing of the passport yeah it's a, it's a red rectangle there yeah so there's a three, three on it yeah yeah i mean that's the fact that it's written in thai as well and like it doesn't matter what language you're written in it doesn't implicate you or have any issue going anywhere else at all you're not like you know it used to annoy me that like oh this is going to be hanging over me in some way but it's not at all. It's just a completely irrelevant thing outside of Thailand. Um, you're obviously 
not in any legal trouble or anything like that. So, Paul, let me just come in with some That's questions, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, at any point in this, did you feel that this guy was, you know, he was lying, he was he was ducking you, he was giving... John? You, yeah, oh, John. Yeah. He was giving you all these yeah, excuses yeah, yeah. and he was disappearing and all that. Did you just yeah. feel like this guy's having me on here? Oh, yeah, 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 many times. Right right up until he gave me the money back. I was like, you were, you were in on this. It, I would go up and down. I was... I used to, then you have to go back to remember, I stayed when I was pretty broke at that time in 2019, um, staying in his hostel because he had a hostel before an apartment. And like, he just was like, pay at the end, pay when you leave. I stayed for about three weeks and I needed that to happen. Like I was, I was very welcome. They <laughs> let me pay at the end, eating food with him all the time. Um, why would he want to do that to me? I used to think like, but well, then you, know, you you don't know who you can trust in life. And like, I'm not naive about that. So. Do you think this was a scam or was this like just a very, very incompetent visa agent? It's a good question. I think the first one was incompetence and the second one was a scam, right? So there's, there's two offices, if you remember, like the first ones, they... they they say that they, they said that they could no longer do the no no. And actually, the lady at the airport, when I what I did say to her was, uh, "I'm sorry about this. I was on a no no, and they wouldn't let me get a no no no." And then she used this word, "Oh, but no no is illegal now. Illegal. What do you mean it's illegal? Like nobody told me it was going to become illegal when I was on it. And surely, stop calling me Shirley. Uh, like surely you should be allowed just go back onto a tourist visa now." Why, why are your hands tied like this? If you paid the money for one, like, can we not just go down to the office and like get retrospective stamps and we'll just clear all this up? Like, can't we all just get along? Like Rodney King said, like, why? <laughs> you, so you, you, you kind of, so you said the second part of it was a scam. You think they were trying to like hustle you for money and then it didn't work or what, yeah. was, what was the scam in the second part of it? The scam of the second part of it was John hasn't got his money back yet. He got scammed. Yeah, well, Paul, you I also did... got banned for three years because because of what they did. Yeah, no, I know, I know. So you didn't come out of it that well at all, really. No, um, I didn't. But as how do you feel that... about that, Paul? Like the fact that, like, all right, for you, right, you, you don't have a wife and kids, but imagine if that was someone that genuinely was over there oh. and wanted to go through the visa process. Say they had a wife and kids in Thailand, and all of a sudden they get banned for a oh, couple of years, like. No, I know, man. It's a cautionary tale. Don't ever, it, don't let it go beyond 90 days. Or in the first place, don't do anything. This wasn't, I don't, can't call this under the table because the first two ones were done correctly. You know, they did get me, they do do visas. The first company that were with that, I have no, no, right here. Let me just bring it up. Um, well, yeah, I suppose go, make sure you go to the ones that's like, are, ABC teaching on this on the main roads. Just go to the most official looking agencies. Or in the future, when I'm going back, just going to stay on tourist visas. That's that's the ironic thing. It's the best one. No sweat. You know you know where you stand. Leave the country after three months, and ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time, Lao will give you a new one, and no stress. And um, but let me just bring up a non o right here, right? Just. From 24 September 2020, all it is is a stamp, but that's that's 100% official, no, no. Because that, okay. I mean, that, yeah. that was, that was looked at by the airport as well, and they, they know what's real and what's not real. Obviously. So, Paul, what would you say to someone if they're watching this now and they say, well, like, you know, you aren't being very proactive because you let them have your passport for, like, mm. a long time. Was it over a year they had your passport? yeah. I you get know, that. I, I hear that a lot now. Um, like when I, when I was over in Thailand, like I was very careful. No one ever, I would never have my passport over to someone I didn't know. Mm -hmm. like, no, that would freak I'm, me um, out, man. Yeah. I'm with you on that, but let me, let me explain. All right. So remember I got passports up until I got visas up until December, 2020. All right. And now you're expecting the third one. You're expecting the, the extra one, the additional one, right? What would you have done there? 
everyone, a lot of people are giving me mad advice. There's this one German lad who I who had it out with one day. He was like, oh, he was giving me this big Jordan Peterson thing. You're running away from responsibility. You're, you're, I did them. I was actually, if you really think about it, and I don't expect like sympathy or anything. You could have your version, but I was proactive in that I chose a way more expensive visa. This would only, co- all the, all the tourist extensions would only cost me multiply 1800 baht by uh, 12 or f- by, sorry, by 16, 17. Would have come to a lot less than 50,000 baht. Um, I know how to do that stuff. I, I chose what seemed the most responsible thing to do going on to these more official visas and I got burnt over it. And when it, when it goes late now, and you, you, of course I was like, let's get it back. No, no, no. Just, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. I, I know we're going to get it, John would say. Were you not stressed out when you were on overstay? I mean, you had the, the ultimate experience where you're walking down Walking Street and the guy beside you gets pulled over and he's on overstay yeah. and he gets arrested and you know you're on overstay as well. I mean, that would, I mean, that's stressful. You're watching your back when you're going around. Who wants to live like that? How did you feel when that was going on? That process of being on overstay. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of touched on that, that it was there. It annoyed me that I'd done, again, I paid 50,000 baht, way more than what most people are doing with their 1800s for the two-month extensions. Um, So I felt like I've done nothing wrong and I can't be punished over this. And I, I, that's what I used to think. Like, I'll, I'll have a recourse to this eventually. Um, and I was just getting on my life, like out living life, making my videos, playing football, working, of course. Um, and it it would co- it would come up every now and then, like uh, be like, oh, this this passport thing, you know. But I never lost sleep over it. It was there, annoying me sometimes. Actually, my mom was quite stressed over. It. She'd always be asking me, and I'd always just tell her, yeah, like I should have just told her I have it. Really, shouldn't I? Should have, should have, you know, you should tell your mother that. Um, she used to get worried about it. my dad as she was as well. My mom only just told me that my dad was worried I wouldn't get out of the country. Not, which all of that was not um, necessary. You won't, you won't be any trouble like that. Um, the the rules are there, and you're overstay. You pay the money, and you're not gonna be like detained or locked up at the airport. Did that's, you tell anybody? Time. Like, did you? Oh, yeah. Did you, you? You told your friends, or did you keep it yeah. secret and just hold yeah, it for yeah. yourself? You told your yeah. friends what you told your friends you were on overstay. Yeah, told, we're told, not worried in case one of them would just rat you out. My close friend rat me out. Well, it's but it's part of your man. It, it wouldn't be it, all it <laughs> takes is for one person. Basically, what do they say? Loose lips sink ships, right? So the more people you tell and know about it, the higher yeah. the chances are of someone letting slip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I would. Uh, I didn't go to my mate Ross like. Best mate over there. Shout out, Ross. I didn't go to him and say, like, oh, yeah, I'm overstay. He knew about it all the time. He was like, he was like, don't worry, man. Like, I'll, I'll help you with this. And, like, we would, we would just, I would let him know what was the story. Um, then when a few, it would come up. Like, it always comes up in Thailand when you're at the swimming pool. So, what visa you on? What visa are you on? And I would just say to people, oh, I'm on this non-O one. And uh, well, I'm still waiting for it. I might, say, I might say to a few people. And just... Oh, yeah, I let this German guy know one day and he pulls over to me on the road one day and he was like, because he, he said, I, yeah. When I told him about it, I get a message off him online the next day because he's married to a Thai and he's like, I can help you with this, all right? Like, come for a coffee with me. I think I can help you. All he wanted to do was give me a big Jordan Peterson spear. What was he, said, when you met him for a coffee, what was he saying to you? Ran into him on soy, boom, sampan. Uh, when I was just coming back from playing football and he pulls over to me and I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, I'm. You were gonna give me a. You, you claim to be coming to give me advice, and all you want to do is give me this big like lecture that I'm running away from my responsibilities and all this. And like, and he was like, "Are you overstay?" I immediately say, "Yeah," and then he was trying to claim I was trying to. I didn't hide that from anybody. He was. Why would I? If I'm trying to get out of this, of course I'm gonna tell the truth. I told him straight away, and then he, in a message later that he was like, "You were trying to say it, I had to get that out of you." I was like, "No, that would be completely irrational if the guy that's trying to help me." is uh, why would I not tell him the facts of it, you know? Like, was he trying to give you advice or was he just giving you a hard time? He's giving me a hard time, just trying to be, just just an arsehole. And um, just saying, you need you need to 
just get it back. You know, he, he did say one thing that was true, but I was I already had this decision made a couple of days or a week before that. I said we just get it back now. And but what did he say again, when you, again, what again, did he mean when he said you're running away from responsibilities? It doesn't really matter what he thinks. Like he was just he was he was like, How could you let this go this long? And and all this, and yeah, there'd probably be comments of people saying the same thing, but again, I'd got two correct visas and now you just it was like waited out how did you feel when he told you that you might have to smuggle you out of the country into cambodia <laughs> that's mad that is mad i'm sorry i can't keep a straight face that is mad what but like what did you i would have been like what you're gonna sneak me where what in a in the back of a pickup through the or walk through the hike through the jungle or like what's going on like yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was so stupid. So it was all so stupid and avoidable. Um, when you say, okay, you gave me the money round, he's he gave me all the money back. I don't, yeah, I, but he gave you the money back, but you got like he gave you the money he, back, but, at, what, but you still got banned. Like but, but, he but was he, the cause what, of it, and him and him not being he, honest. Why would he care about me? Get, why would he say, I want to get this Irish guy banned for three years from Thailand? Why would he want that? He didn't want that to happen. Yeah, he but he, he, could have just, he, could, he could have known well that you're on. He knew well, well, at the start, he knew you were on overstay. And they let you, how long was it, how how far gone before you actually knew you were on overstay? Was it six he's, months? He's 50,000 baht in the red now. And I just live in a new country. There. How many countries are in the world? Yeah, like I took my licks over. The ban annoyed me. But I've moved on from that now. So, Paul, let's get into where you are now and how things are going for you now, right? So you're in Colombia, right? So tell us, where are you in Colombia? What's it like over there? Yeah, man, I'm in um, Medellin. I'm in Bayo. So Bayo is actually like, Medellin is a, is a big metropolis of several cities. It's huge, humongous. So like, when I came to Bayo in North Medellin, I thought I was coming to like, Aranala, like, no, you're, you're moving into a city of wider Antioquia. And Medellin is the, the center of that. So I'm up in Bayo. Bayo is half a million people. It's huge. Um, so yeah, like, why did I come here and stuff? Um, it's always been on the radar for me. Speaking Spanish. I lived in Spain for three years before I went to Thailand. And... I'm like a broken record with people. Like I'd be speaking Spanish with people. I'm always singing Spanish and rapping Spanish. And like, um, even on the, before I came out in Feb 2020, but came back out. So that I my Thai period was like two chapters, really two sets of three years, three in the north with Chiang Mai and Bangkok, Bangkok central. But like, and my life up there was so different. Like I was in a relationship up there, and it just felt way more stable and everything. And then I had the second stint down in Patea, where it was a whole new start. It's a fun, vibrant place to live in all, but it never felt like home because of all the madness down there. And so all the time there, despite it's hard to have a bad time there. But all the time there, it was like, I should I should go to South America now, like the Thailand culture. I've, I've filled up on that and it's time for a break. Um, COVID, of course, meant I'm not going to go do quarantines and all that. I haven't got a passport right now. Wait till I get my passport back. Um, and I'll get out there, but the decision was kind of made, I'd be there by the end of 2022. Is it safe over there? So here you've got historical organized crime dating back from the Escobar legacy. All right. I would estimate, I'm doing lots of research into this, but my rough estimate would be like 0.005 of the 50 million percent of the 50 some million people who live, in, who live here in Colombia are involved in that organized crime, right? Outside of that, oh my God, you would not believe how warm, friendly, and when I say friendly, it, it, you know, everyone talks about, everyone's so friendly in that country that I just visited. It's different here. There's something really, there's an essence to them. There's, the small talk is realer than the Thai small talk. It's, they're going to get to know your first name straight away. You don't hear gringo like you hear Farang. They're so warm. They're unbelievably religious, by the way. I'm not religious, but that that reflects into their personalities. It's all they're very much uh, God. Extremely Catholic, are they? Oh, extremely, yeah. And so, 
following that's one good thing about religious doctrine like if you believe in the ten commandments which i don't like you're not you don't want to rob from people these people don't want to rob you they, they want to protect you they, they they love people but what about the money paul the money the 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 the, the denario is that what they say close enough yeah you can say denario denaro yeah denaro. Uh, it's really cheap really cheap is it the same same cost of living as thailand or what similar or what cheaper is it it's cheap okay like I'm, I'm eating out every day, a couple of beers a night. Um, what more do you want? Like, what more do you spend your money on? Buy clothes here and there. Like this Columbia shirt costs fourteen dollars. Official Columbia shirt. What about um, rent where you're staying? Yeah, rent is the only thing, all right? Take rent out of it. It's way cheaper than thought. It's not way cheaper. Sorry. Um, give an example. My breakfast this morning: scrambled eggs and arepa. Arepa is like cornbread. Two euro, 80 baht, something like that, right? Um, it's coffee, one euro 50. You can have coffee for 30 cent if you want the, the cheaper Tinto, the real local Colombian stuff. Um, but you're in a big city, right? Like you are in a big metropolis, so you pay for rent a bit more. Like I'm paying about uh, 9,000 9, baht for a room in an apartment, you know? Um, no, it's good. Like, it's not expensive. You're still living really cheaply. It's South America. Maybe a little bit more than Thai rent. Um, Like in Thailand, you're getting, maybe in Patea, maybe you're getting a condo to yourself for nine, eight, eight nine thousand baht with a big swimming pool and all that stuff that goes with it. Um, You've been traveling now for a long time. You've been out of Ireland for years. Do you ever think you'll come back and settle in Ireland or what's the plan? Will you, will you always be a digital nomad? Like, what's the story? So, no, I'll... I'll most likely never truly live in Ireland. Why is that? Because look how exciting and energized it is out here for me. Like this is only Colombia I'm only starting with. And there's like this whole continent to go and discover. Chile, Brazil, Mexico, huge countries. With I, I kind of feel like I don't really believe in um, calling or destiny, but I do in some way feel like um, this is made for me to do. And do you ever think? Do you ever think like you you'd settle down and have a have have a family around like that? Yes, is that so ever I, on the cards? Is I, heard, it... I heard you ask that to uh, Tony as well. Like, I said, settle down, of course. Yeah, like, I know you're very conventional in that, and yeah, I will, I will too. Yeah, but that's what do your parents say that you're off traveling around well, the world about... doing all this? They probably well, I mean... want you to go back to Ireland and settle down, do they? No, 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 not at all. Because, like, they see how happy I am. And they see that I'm doing good stuff and I'm making progress in my life. But being out here, like, it's not, it's not as exciting. They're happy for you, are they? It's not as exciting it is to just come out to Colombia like this. Like, I'm 36 and I feel like a kid again. And I'm working every day. It's not like I don't go in for the, like, oh, you know, carpe diem. And no, you got to work every day to do this. But what about, like, uh, teaching? what you're doing, like teaching English online, like is it ever going to get get that income where you're going to be able to just buy a house or like really have decent money? Like I do have decent money. I earn like four times what a Colombian earns out here. I just told you I'm extremely lucky to earn what I earn. I could buy a house here. Yeah, but is it enough for like, I suppose, legacy money to where you're, you're, make, you're, you're 50 years old and you're like, right, I'm not working again or I'm 50, you're 55 and you're like, that's it, I'm done. Or is you'll always be grafting? No, no, I've I've good confidence that I've good confidence that things will happen for me in other fields. You don't, I don't expect to be just earning money from teaching, like four years of living in South America. Would you start a business over there? Possibly, could be. Like I'm, I'd be open to all different things, but um. I just have very quiet confidence that a good few years in South America with the abilities I have of what I can do on YouTube. I think I can couple that with English teaching. If you, if you, if you can double what you make off English teaching, that's, that's plenty of money, man. Like it's plenty of money. The so what I'll do, what I'll do is I'll leave the link to Paul's YouTube channel and his Instagram in the description so if you want to check that out it's in the description box and uh do us a favor if you're not already subscribed to this channel hit the subscribe button 
like the video and leave us a comment. I'm always interested to hear what you have to say. And we'll do more with Paul down the line. Paul, I'm going to end this call now. I'm going to get me dinner. I'm really hungry. But hey, take it easy over there in Columbia and have a good time, all right? Cheers, Pete. I'll talk to you soon, all right? Thanks, all right, man. Thanks great. so much great. for doing this. No, nah, man. Pleasures. Oh, what's the expression? I mean, thanks to you. The pleasure's all mine. It was great.